All right, welcome back to the show. Rapid Fire Wednesday with the Gresh Man. We start with the uh, the big commercial of the day, Tom Brady's Foot Locker spot, where he pokes fun at Deflategate. What'd you make of it? I thought it was well written. It wasn't overt. You had to follow the story to realize what he's talking about, yeah. but it still worked in terms of selling the commercial. So to whomever wrote that, kudos to them. Are you surprised this is kind of how Brady acknowledges Deflategate? <laughs> um... You know, it's funny. I've seen Brady evolve over the years, having been here from the beginning and all the years on the radio network. And Tom Brady's a funny guy. He's got a sense of humor. And I honestly think it kind of took Peyton Manning to sort of knock down that wall mm. to where, hey, it's okay to poke fun at yourself. Everybody knows the flake eight's a freaking joke to begin with. So why not make a joke about it? So I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. But with Brady, and he's always so guarded, it's like, oh, boy, wow. So... I don't know. I guess I'm in the middle somewhere. What was the last thing you bought at Foot Locker? What, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, seriously? They have big and tall, don't they? No, I, I, I can't walk in and get a 15 triple E. <laughs> like, I can't walk in and get a 4X tall shirt. Like, this is the story of my life. Do you know I don't have a Channel 12 pullover uh. shirt? Because, they, because it's an extra 8 bucks <laughs> to get an, a 4XL tall? Well... Here's a 3X. We think it'll work. <laughs> you know, and, and I've got my, my nipples are popping through for crying out loud. Like, seriously, it's a story of my life. Everywhere I've some ever been. Some former athlete just started a, uh, who was it? Some football player has some big and tall thing going because he Well, good, because he's big and tall. Like, we exist. You do exist. Hello, salespeople upstairs. I've only been doing this damn thing with three different anchors for crying out loud. But we can't get a tall and fat guy thing on here? Good grief. Uh, speaking of tall guys, Rob Gronkowski not at practice today with a chest injury. Do you expect to see him on Sunday? Uh, no, I don't. If they didn't want him to fly to New York yesterday, it makes me wonder about going across country. Mm. And, you know, you got to <laughs> – Hey, it's the Niners. Like, you hate to disrespect right. the opponent, but do you really need Rob Gronkowski to beat him? I don't think you do. Give me a letter grade for the Patriots' defense right now. Uh, a C. I mean, they're right in the middle. In the words of Costanza, he's in the meaty part of the curve. Not falling <laughs> ahead, or not pulling <laughs> ahead, not falling C. behind. They're at a solid C. Look, they're also a work in progress, Yanni, and I think yeah. we need to understand that there is some experimenting still going on out there for Bill Belichick, but let's remember, they've always said from Thanksgiving Giving on, you want to mm. play your best football. They've only got a couple of weeks to figure out what they've got and how they're going to deploy the talent. All right, Chip Kelly, a guy Bill Belichick respects. Uh, not a great tenure in Philly, struggling in San Francisco. Will he ever be a successful NFL coach? Yeah, I think he can be. He needs to go away from the personnel end. And the problem is he's got a joker out there named Trent Balky who's running that organization who is pretty brutal, to say the least. So, uh, sadly, I don't think Chip will ultimately materialize as a good head coach because people are going to look at it and say he failed on the personnel end. Let's remember, he was not brutal in Philadelphia. They did go to the playoffs in the first year. I don't think Chip's a bad football coach at all, but you know, you got to have talent and high-end talent in the NFL. All right, I want to finish with a baseball question. Uh, Why? It's relevant. Why would you do this to Rick me? Porcello, Cy Young Award winner. Kudos to him. Uh, look, much deserved. And even though I still view him as a solid number two starter and do the Red Sox have a number one, he had a fantastic year. He was able to mitigate the lack of strikeouts by being dominant by winning games. Mm. And Yanni, I think August and September, pitching and playing in important games down the stretch mattered to the Cy Young voters this year. So you're right. Kudos to him. And where are the people complaining about $20 million now? Yeah, Anyone? No. Like, no one's complaining at this point. All right, Gresh, good stuff. We'll see you tomorrow night. And much more from the Sports Wrap coming up right after this.